Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here and welcome back to this mini-series of masking tips and tools for ZBrush. Now, this is going to be the final video, the one that's going to wrap up this series. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I will suggest that you go back and, and have a look at those because I'm going to refer back to some of the techniques and some of the tips that I gave you in previous videos so that we can move a little bit faster in this final video, which is kind of like an overview of uh, showing you how I would use those tools and those tips and tricks in a practical way and also showing you one more trick that I think is fantastic to build custom masks and, and more intricate patterns of masks um, using polypaint and masking tools and automated masking tools in zero. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. Again, I'm using the default uh, standard UI from ZBrush. Uh, and this is what we came up with <laughs> with the previous technique where I show you how to generate all of these details with custom masking brushes, uh, You know, which is a pretty powerful technique. So if you haven't watched it, um, I, I would recommend you go back and, and watch that one first. Uh, now, so I just went ahead and duplicated or cloned this tool so that we can work on this character uh, in a kind of like in a single sub tool just to make it easier. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make sure that this has a white color so or um, it is filled with a white color or any color it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go to color and fill object with that white selected so that way um, I can take my standard brush which I have already converted into a poly paint brush by disabling CAD and enabling RGB. I can select any other color and go ahead and paint so that's that's the main step, right? The the first thing, the first step that we need to do in order to continue with this uh, specific trick that I'm going to show you. All right. So the whole idea now is to be able to combine some of the tools and some of the masking techniques that I've been showing you throughout this, um, you know, throughout this series, and create a custom mask, you know, something that we can save and and basically uh, access at any point or at any time that we want to. So uh, what that means basically is that we can you know, create a mask like, let's say, mask by cavity. So I can bring in my radial menu and click on cavity. And now we have more details. So the, the cavity mask is going to be slightly, you know, more interesting. Um, so we can take that mask and let's say combine it with something else. So let's say we like this one, uh, but we also have a custom mask that we want to, oops, let me just reset the custom um, mask that we had. So I can also create a mask like this or protect maybe the eyes. And I want to also combine this with the, you know, with the, the cavity, and perhaps something else, right? Or uh, an ambient occlusion, something like that. So this is kind of like the, the, the main reason I want to show you this tip because you can utilize automated versions or automated processes in ZBrush uh, like, uh, also I have layers. Let me just delete those layers or bake them all. All right, and let's just collapse that. So let's go to the masking palette, right? So when I refer to automated processes in Zbrush to mask, uh, I refer to these type of things, right? So we can click on mask by cavity, and that's kind of like an automated way to mask those uh, details in there. You can also use something like mask by, uh, let's say, smoothness or or peaks and valleys. So click on peak and, peaks and valleys, and that series is going to have a look at, you know, the peaks and the valleys of the sculpture and generate this this weird mask. You can do the same thing with smoothness, uh, basically targeting the smoother areas. So you can find a very inter interesting and, and complex patterns, you know, by just clicking on these different buttons. Uh, but the most powerful thing to me, at least, is to be able to combine this in a, in a single mask, right? Something that you can save and come back, especially when you're doing, you know, not only details, but when you're also doing uh, poly painting or texturing your, your characters. This is something that I would use uh, all the time in, in, that, in that specific workflow. So let's clear that mask first. And I'm going to start with a another process that it is something that was introduced in the latest version of ZBrush. So if you don't have these this version of 2021, you might not see it. And it is the, in the in the plugin palette. So I'm just going to dock that to, let's actually put that on the left-hand side. So let's click on the plugin palette and drop that in there. And it is this ambient occlusion. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the ambient occlusion section. Um, there is also a video in my YouTube channel where I explain uh, this in a little bit more in depth. So I'm just going to go a bit faster. Uh, if you want to, you know, learn a little bit more about this ambient occlusion, which is a ray tracing, real ray tracing ambient occlusion in ZBrush. Um, have a look at that video and I will put a link in the description as well. So this one, basically, if I go ahead and click on compute, 
Siri is going to analyze this um, the sculpture and it's going to produce a, a nice ambient occlusion. So you'll see the difference in just a second when uh, when Siri finishes. All right. So um, you might not see the difference. So let me just do something else uh, to make it a little bit clearer. I'm going to go to the render palette and dock that to the right hand side. Um, so if I click on flat, that is going to show me just the shadeless version. So it's going to remove the material and you can see that there are some darker areas and a very nice ambient occlusion, right? So the great thing about this process and this, you know, this plugin, not only it gives you the ambient occlusion um, that is super cool and realistic, but it also creates this, this shading as a mask. So I can hold control and click to invert that mask, right? So you can see this, is, this, um, this computing of the ambient occlusion is ultimately just a mask. So that's the first thing that I want to show you, a very simple way to generate something rather complex as a mask. So uh, let's go back to the preview and we have the mask in there. So the first thing I want to do is invert that mask, right? So that way we are, whatever we do, let's, let's say if I select a red color and I start painting, we basically just target that ambient occlusion. So let me just uh, hide the mask, control H. Right, so I can target and paint just in these areas, like if I'm painting the amino occlusion. So if I were to just do this, which is what I'm going to do, you can paint the amino occlusion, right? So um, what I want to do really is utilize this masking that was created by the amino occlusion and go to color and fill object with a black color. So that basically now we can clear the mask, right? Clear mask. Now we have a poly paint from that ambient occlusion, which is awesome, right? Um, that's it, that's, that's how easy this is, right? And let's go back to, actually, I'm gonna work on this flat mode, not the preview, so that you can clearly see the different masks that I'm gonna start mixing and, and adding. So there you go, that's the first one, the first kind of like tip is to use the masking, uh, sorry, the ambient occlusion or the mask generated by the ambient occlusion as a mask and then you can just fill in with the color. Now let's go ahead and also combine this with the mask by cavity, right? So another automated version. I'm gonna click on mask by cavity and let's bring in my custom palette from the Wacom tablet that we did in the second video of the series and I'm gonna blur this a little bit, not too much, I think that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and invert that mask now and hide it, right? So what we can see right now is the polypane from the ambient occlusion mask. But now I'm going to use the standard brush with the RGB enable, uh, Zia disable, and with a black color. And I can basically paint, I mean, I'm doing this very, you know, with a lot of um, pressure, but we can paint to further enhance that ambient occlusion mask. So I can just start doing this. And I'm just painting with, with polypane, just black and white. Right or well, just black color over white uh, background. So I can very easily refine this mask. And again, what I'm trying to achieve here is just, um, you know, a, a, a very well refined and custom mask that then I can take advantage of for poly paint or for whatever else. You know, we can inflate these later on, for instance, and create a very blobby uh, and interesting set of details. All right. So this is the first step of combining masking by cavity with the amino occlusion. So let's clear that mask and let's do the same thing just to show you with uh, smoothness, right? So the smoothness will target certain areas, right? I can hide the mask and I can start painting. You see, it's not gonna paint everything. Um, I probably just wanna invert that so that it targets like, it's kind of like the, the, not the cavity, but the curvature almost, right? Let's hide that. So I can do this and you see it just, it's kind of like overriding certain details, but um, I'm gonna try to do something just a bit softer here, just to create something a bit more interesting in this pattern. But this is all poly paint, right? It's a black and white poly paint. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, just wanted to, to show you how you can combine those. And this is really the, the main tip. Um, the main final tip of this series is how you can take all of these automated versions or automated ways of generating masks and combine them together. Um, let me just do one more. Let's try, uh, let's actually, let's try mask by cavity again, but let's go to the mask adjust and let's apply something like that, a profile like this. Maybe an inverted profile, sorry. 
something like that okay and let's invert that mask hide it and that way we sort of like target even sharper corners right so this is like tiny 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 details i think that's um you know i think you get the idea obviously you can spend a lot more time um refining your masks and maybe just adding the polypane in the areas that you actually want them i'm going a little bit overboard in here um but yeah that's that's roughly what i would use these automated versions or automated uh processes to generate masks all right so now let's go ahead and clear that mask and as you can see, we have a combination of uh, the amino occlusion mask that was generated from that process, the uh, mask by cavity, actually two, two versions of the mask by cavity, the smoothness and the peaks and valley all in one place, right? So what we can do now, obviously this is not a mask, but if I wanna use this polypane, this black and white polypane as a mask, all I have to do is go to mask by intensity. And this basically looks at the intensity of color. So obviously, the white and, and black, there's, uh, there's a lot of contrast in there. So I can go ahead and click on mask by intensity and that automatically masks out the, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, let's go back to preview and let's go ahead and turn off the polypaint so that you can see the masking from that polypaint, right? And I can invert the mask, but it's there and I can hide it as well. And again, this is a this is a mask that was generated from the combination of tools. And I can go to the formation palette. And let's, this is gonna be very obvious once I do something like inflate. So I can go inflate. It's gonna inflate the entire model uh, to sort of like tighten all those details and create this interesting pattern here, something like what we did in the first video. Uh, but even those crevices that I accentuated with the mask by cavity towards the end of um, you know, the combination of the mask, um, they're still there. But this is not necessarily how I would use this or how I would approach the, the detailing once I have the mask. I just wanted to show you with the inflate that is pretty pretty strong. I would probably go with the standard brush, um, obviously remove RGB, see add, and I will just go ahead and start um, pushing things with the standard brush. Um, obviously I'm exaggerating this, but uh, you can see that it's, you know, once you have the mask created, this process becomes almost like a, yeah, it's like a no-brainer. You just start adding details, whatever you want. And again, like I did with uh, previous videos, you can store a morph target and also a layer and, you know, control the distance. Now, the I also mentioned that there is a way to sort of save this mask in case you want to recover them. Uh, and this is especially if you want to, you know, if you want to start painting your model, if you want to start adding textures, but, you know, since the, the mask by intensity is based on the polypaint that you have, um, there is a way to save this. So let's go back here. Right. And. All right. So let's go to let's collapse all of these ones. Um, so, again, if I want to recover this mask. All I have to do, because I, this is a black and white polypaint, is go to the masking palette and click on mask by intensity. That's it. Now we have that mask and we can start painting. But if what you want to do is create a mask like this complex, um, this complex mask to start painting, well, obviously when you start painting and adding color, then you will destroy that custom mask, right? So what you can do is want to mask by intensity. So let's go ahead and click on mask by intensity. That gives me that mask, right? So now we have the mask. And also let me just turn off polypaint. Going a little bit all, all over the place right now. Uh, but now we have this mask, right? <laughs> I cleared, let me do it again. So mask by intensity. So it is using, Sirius is now looking at the difference between the black and white colors that we had in the polypaint and it just creates that mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert the mask select a dark color like a black color and you can turn on polypaint now and i'm going to create a new layer right and i'm going to go ahead and fill it with um with a white color sometimes this might not work yeah so sometimes uh, if you have like a layer on and you just fill in the layer it doesn't fill the entire thing so you might just have to increase a large size brush for the the standard brush and just go ahead and paint that uh, whoops it's Select the dark color. So this is just literally painting that mask again in a layer. All right. So now I can go ahead and stop recording. 
clear my mask and turn off the mask if I wanted to and take my my object and I can start painting. So um, I'm going to name this mask and you can do multiple ones by the way. You can have uh, a whole bunch of different masks with different patterns and, and use, even using the, the custom masks as I showed you in previous videos to generate interesting masking um, patterns and all, all of that can be in different layers. So mask one is that layer and the only thing to keep in mind is that once you have layers in order to add details paint or do anything else you need to have a new layer so i'm going to click on new layer automatically started recording and i'm going to start let's say painting something like that so i'm just going to fill this um, sometimes it is sometimes if you go to the color palette and click fill object it, and you're recording you might not do it so you just go ahead and paint the whole thing um, let's go to preview and there we go. Maybe I'm going to change this to a, a skin color. So a skin shade four, so that the color is a little bit, you know, more visible. And yeah, so now we can just go ahead and start. I'm just going to give you a quick tip for poly painting. So I'm going to change the color spray and the alpha so that this is like slightly different way to applying the poly paint. I'm just going to add a slight variation of color here. Some darker, orangey areas. Maybe using a, a yellow tone at the top, just to yeah, just to add some light, maybe some variation in color. All right, but then I want to go ahead and reuse that very complex and intricate mask that I generated with all the tips that I gave you before. Um, that one, the one that we combine into a layer. So what I can do is stop recording, right? I can bring in, I can turn this off and turn this on now, which is it has the the masking. Right, or well, the the poly paint, sorry, saved as a as a poly paint in a layer, which in turn can become a mask just by going to the mask by intensity. So I can click on mask by intensity, and that will utilize this mask. Let's turn that off now. Go back to this new layer, and start recording again. We can invert the mask, or not. Right. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. Hide the mask, and now we can use in this layer that I'm using to paint. I can use something like a darker color like that and I can start target all of those areas that we spend you know I spend some time refining the values and the colors uh, but the point is that you have the ability to paint and work on poly paint in one layer for example and then have the ability to go back and save the layer now this is the same thing if you wanted to do other type of masking so for example um, again just to give you an idea I'm going to stop recording in here turn that off and I'm going to create a new layer Right, and this time I'm gonna I'm gonna fill it with with white as well. I don't know if I can. Yeah, let's just paint with a white color, um, yeah, something like that. And let's go to the masking palette, and let's variate the the smoothness. So I can change the range a little bit, mask by smoothness, and maybe change the coverage as well. So you can play around with this to generate different patterns. I'm gonna reduce it quite a bit and increase this. All right, so something interesting. Right, you get this again. This is this is also because of the resolution of my Dynamish. So you get those little weird lines. Um, you know, you can smooth this a lot more. But anyway, you can have this uh, this mask that you can also invert. Right, uh, I'm gonna blur that mask a little bit. So I'm gonna blur that a couple of times. There we go. Hide that and let's go ahead and paint that. So this is gonna generate a nice pattern here for the back picture, like a, some kind of scales or something. Right. Uh, but again, this is all part of a single layer. Once again, I hope that you find this video and the rest of the series useful, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.